Okay, so what did this guy right here learn from 300 approaches? Let me just clean the lens a little bit. It's a little bit blurry. Uh, before getting into this, he claimed to struggle with uh, approaching girls and um, wasn't really doing any approaches at all. And we went on a bit of a month long rampage and he, we, we, we could easily say he did 300 approaches, easily. Uh, and this was not just daytime, nighttime, they would hit the clubs and just approach everything in sight. Um, so, what are your biggest takeaways from learning 300, from doing 300 approaches? Always be on, looking for sets, like everywhere at all times. Positioning, you know, is really important. Mm. Uh, always position first, right? Because like, you just never mm. know. Maybe each position but the opportunity is never right so you don't actually do the approach but at least if you position first then you always have a chance yeah so uh, always be on which is probably what a lot of you guys aren't doing uh, is just always be aware of your surroundings I know I know going to and from work you might think that you don't have time and you see someone that you want to talk to and you don't take that opportunity it's because wow. obviously you would you don't most men don't know how to make that opportunity happen um, but now he has to be a bit more aware of his surroundings and have that motivation to actually make it happen and the positioning part is just putting yourself in the right location position yourself to you can position yourself with plausible deniability why you're there. Like you've got a reason to be somewhere at all times. And then if the opportunity arises, if you have an opener, if there's something in the environment, take that opportunity. But you position yourself and sometimes the opportunity doesn't arise. Um, but if you're not aware, you don't even see the opportunity. If you're not aware and you don't take you know, position yourself, then you're not positioning yourself and, and then you the third one is, you know, if you're not noticing them, you're not positioning yourself, then you don't have an opportunity to even open and start the conversation. So, um, yeah, which is kind of basic stuff. Anything like, uh, what, what else did you pick up? Um, to rely on my voice. So, ah. Yeah, like, sometimes I... Well, many times I would try to get too close because I wasn't mm. relying on my voice. And so really, you don't have to be that close to someone to talk to them if you mm. talk loud enough. That's one thing. And another is to not chase. Let, let, let me elaborate on that one. <laughs> so I would argue that the London Day Game model was in some part the, the Yad Stop was some in some part developed from guys uh, who will become super needy off the approach because they weren't hooking enough. Uh, let me explain. So you go do the approach, you go and position yourself next to a girl, you go to approach the girl and then you open, you say something and the girl's like, uh, walks away. And that happens enough, it starts to, with some guys, uh, it will start to make them feel like they're a little bit less worth, they're, they're not worthy, they're, which, which is not the case at all. Um, it's a stranger, you don't even know them, they don't know you. Um, but the guys then, when the girl's like, oh no, I don't want to go, and then walk away, the guy would then just automatically start chasing her, like following her, and go, oh no, hey, oh, 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 oh. And it just like hurts your, it hurts, hurts your like, your being, just <laughs> destroys your self-confidence and um, respect for yourself. Uh, and instead of just like chasing, 
you can say something, you use your mouth. Um, if she's not hooking, um, use your mouth to say something, but don't just go running along. And that, that's where the idea of the London Day Game model and the false ideology that you need to stop every girl, she needs to stop in her tracks and pay attention to you, that, that came from guys just not being able to hook enough sets. And I guess time efficiency and, well, you can push it too, too far where you're doing the yad stop and you're stopping every girl, but you're just freaking them out and they're getting giving you flaky or fake numbers. Um, and so that comes from insecurity. I would say that whole ideology was built on a form of insecurity because they just weren't hooking enough and just deal with that. If they're not going to hook, maybe just let them go. Maybe your opener wasn't good enough. Maybe your positioning wasn't good enough. Vocal tonality, maybe you came across, you know, yeah, there's, there's a multitude of things that need to be in line. Um, and sometimes they just don't want to hook regardless of what you do and then you know immediately like chasing them it, it can only just hurt you as a person really um, just let them go so that's a more I just have to explain that you know so people understand what it actually means yeah that was a problem mm. yeah and, uh, yeah the other thing was um, <clears throat> don't chase, which is easier said than done for me. Like, early on, I I was, I didn't even realize I was basically like autistic with this, right? Like my, I couldn't control my feet. Really still struggling where a girl would, I would say, hey or something, and then she'd stop. And then I would start talking and then maybe she'd like make, take a left step to try to walk away. And I take a left step towards her and then like, it's like at some point it, it looked like I was like a stalker, you know, mm. and uh, that's, it's, I had no idea that I had this like instinct to like mm. chase after, and you know, a stranger that I was just trying to talk to. Mm. Yeah, just adjusting to uh, positioning yourself, opening, you, you, you start your opener, and if they're not going to come to the party, then just have the self-respect to let it go. Also, that is one of the fundamental aspects of my definition of indirect game is that you are invisible at all times and that she doesn't remember you. But if you start chasing her, jumping in front of her, drawing attention, she's gonna remember you. Um, but you want to be able to fish in the same pond in your own neighborhood forever, indefinitely, and be invisible. You don't want to. You don't want security and the the local girls tweeting about you or posting on their Instagram about you. Um, and so you open, and they don't hook. Let it go. We're just we're, we're just like fly fishing, walking around. Oh, do we get a bite? No. Do we get a bite? But you're doing it in a... You've got plausible deniability to be anywhere you are. You're fly fishing. You hook one. She hooks. Then you get to run some game. Then you see where it goes from there. And even though we were letting go so many opportunities... Well, we, we were letting go without chasing or forcing it. We were just going through our phone. Well, I was just going through my phone. And... The amount of opportunities that we were able to create while we're, you know, just over this period of time is so unbelievable that I, I'd forgotten because I was making videos and I was like, oh, I can't remember those two girls we were hanging out with at 4 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> I totally forgot. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. We created so many opportunities even by letting them go. So there's no need to panic about that and try to make every approach stick. And that's partly why when I connected up with the London Day Game model of being too aggressive, being too direct, more of a weak man sort of 
uh, way of looking at it because that that guy is afraid to approach so when he does the approach he needs to make every approach stick so therefore he wants to work harder to keep it after you do this properly and you get used to approaching and get used to running your game you can approach anybody and it doesn't matter if you lose this opportunity because we can create another one literally a couple of minutes later on um, you don't need to hold on to every approach and try to you know make a miracle happen off every approach um, it's better not to make a fool of yourself be invisible uh, just blend back into the crowd go back fly fishing get another hook and run it again mm. I, I need to elaborate so they understand yes yeah. and uh, mm. I have another one which is to always bring the energy um, I found myself like maybe just not having like not really thinking about having the energy so I would say something and they would respond and then I wouldn't know what to say so I just wouldn't say anything and you really it's better to just BS and say anything than to just be this like Mr. S you know all, all silent because the, you just end up come off looking creepy you know? especially a night night game mm -hmm. just it's all emotions that's another thing guys like what's my opener how about hello <laughs> it's, it's what you say after the the opener that matters but it's um uh women are far more emotional than logical and it's better to bring a whole bunch of a, a story that goes nowhere that you just made up and some good emotions than uh, some logical thing about your work or <laughs> some politics or something something boring and logical you're better off just like dribbling a whole bunch of emotional crap uh, it will still be more effective than being serious and, and being serious and logical yes. sometimes will backfire majorly and you do come across like a super creep and weirdo if you're real serious and boring and yeah, yeah especially night game but the day game's a little bit more finesse there's a little bit more to it right my mm. I definitely had the most success when I was just completely relaxed and like you know joking around teasing them Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So be more emotional. Uh, uh, emotional. A bit more like bring the emotions. Bring the illogical, irrational version of yourself. Um, and I would say even be polarizing as well, depending on the girl. You know, say some things that are a little bit outrageous that you would think would get yourself in trouble. And, you know, it very rarely will get you in trouble, you know. Yeah. You know, and then logistics, you know, always important. As you like to mention logistics yes mm. yes dude popped up in my feed and he's like some dude on YouTube giving dating advice he said oh yeah yes this is approaching girls and then you get logistics I'm like what the fuck this guy's been watching my videos and stole the idea but he, he obviously misrepresented it um, you need the logistics so that you can uh, text them and line up a date that's the most sim simplistic way of putting it you need to know where she's at and figure out what her schedule is of the week so that you can text them and line up a date. Logistics helps you to figure that out in simplistic way. I've got a blog on my website, um, a we uh, uh, one blog post explaining what that means. But yeah, if you don't have logistics, it makes it very difficult to line up a date. And don't get me wrong, some girls are just and they're going to make it easy for you but the majority of them won't and they're the ones you often want the ones that make it difficult and you have to try to figure out how to finesse it and getting the logistics does help mm. logistics also um, 
you want to try to have full awareness of just the situation, the context, you know, like who is she actually with? Is she by herself? Or is she with like a guy? Like sometimes you just rush into it and the boyfriend is like right there, you know, a couple feet behind. And yeah, you don't want you don't want that. <laughs> you just want to make sure that you mm. are approaching a single set and not mm. a girl with a, a boyfriend. Yeah. Well, that got us in a bit of trouble a few times. <laughs> um, I'm still alive. But the the perif have, it's not just about having the peripheral vision going. At, uh, it's also just who's she with? What's she doing there? Like, is she by herself? What's going on? Um, you know, getting yourself in a situation where the boyfriend comes back and you find yourself in a little bit of trouble. You can always talk your, your way out of it, which is good, which is good practice too. But and you also don't want to be in the interaction and having your eyes like darting around looking. You just want to be aware of your environment. And some guys have a better situational awareness than others, um, but it can be trained. Just keep that in mind. It can be trained. Yeah. Um, you know? I, I'm laser focused at all times, and it is mm. not good. Not good. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 once you get into the uh, interaction, like, is there a group of people behind you, like giving her a look? Like, is it was it obvious that you made that approach? What? Are there some cock blockers that are just like some some um, observers in the background that are just looking for any opportunity to ruin it for you? Um, are there um, onlookers that just um, if they catch her eye, she's going to realise that this is a kind of a cold approach and that you know she looks silly for talking to you or something like that. Just being aware of it. It's not just having the boyfriend around. Um, is is the friend nearby? And when the friend comes, is the like? What's your what's the time constraint? How long until the friend, the mum, the boyfriend um, comes back to her, and she needs to go? And so therefore, you need to get the number or contact information before that person arrives. And are you even aware of it? Uh, because very rarely someone's out by themselves going somewhere. Um, even just in simple terms, catching a train. Catching the train, you get into a, an interaction with an awesome girl, but you don't find out when she gets off the train or the bus stop. And at the very last minute she goes, oh, I need to go, I need to go. And you've messed it up because you didn't figure that out beforehand and you didn't get the number or you get off the train or the bus at that moment and you come across super needy and creepy because you should have got it while you were sitting next to her on the train or the bus. That hurts. So that's all situational awareness. There's a lot involved in that. And this happened to us. It hurts. Very complicated. It still stings. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so we, we, cre we created a lot of opportunities, but when you go through each of those opportunities, there were opportunities within those opportunities. There were missed opportunities that... Yeah, and there's one where we approach mm. some girls and, and... Oh, come, come lower. We approach some... Yeah, there was, a, there was one, one time where we approached some girls and we got them to hook. And it was going well, but like... I didn't think about just getting their contact info and before long um, the guy that was their friend came to pick them up and it was over. Yeah. It hurts. There's always a time constraint. Once you hook, she's not there indefinitely. She's got things to do. She's got friends or family coming back to meet her. To, she's waiting for them. She needs to get off the bus or the train or the bus or the train is coming if you're approaching at that stop if you're in the line that thing that she just ordered 
will arrive and as soon as it's in her hand she needs to rush off to work or where or school or uni or whatever or she's got things to she's you know she's uh or class or uh, gym or um the dentist <laughs> you know uh so you've you've often only got a short period of time to act it's all connected with situational awareness yeah take those opportunities mm. Yeah, and, and if you do, you know, when you do get the contact info, you want to contact them within an hour. Yeah, or as soon as possible, so it's still fresh in your mind who you are, yeah. Um, but of course, if you're getting that in the nightclub, you're wasting your time. In the nightclub, it's pull or nothing, or you find yourself at 3 a.m. in the morning messaging and calling all of these useless numbers. But yeah, day game. Make sure you get message fast, so she's aware, she remembers who you are. She also knows you're keen, but if you leave it 24 hours, it's like, if you're not that keen, it's funny how her, her keenness for you will wane if she thinks that you're not that keen on her, especially in the early stages. Um, she needs to at least feel like you're super keen on her. Mm. It's been 20 minutes already. Um. <laughs> I mean, I think this is pretty good already. Yeah, that'll, that'll do. That'll do. Uh, there's some basics on, um, I guess, what we learned from 300 approaches and many missed opportunities. <clears throat> um, anyway, see you guys in the next one.